itinataas namin ang iyong pangalan. Pinapupurihan at pinasasalamatan ka namin sa lahat ng iyong mga ginawa at pagpapala. Salamat sa panibagong araw na ipinagkaloob mo sa amin. At sa oras na ito na kami ay muling natipon. Gabayanin niyo po kami sa aming mga gawain. Bigyan mo po kami ng talino at lakas upang magampanan po namin ang aming mga tungkulin. Buksan mo po ang aming isip at puso sa mga bagong kaalaman na aming matututunan. At nawa ay maging kagamit-gamit ang mga ito sa aming buhay at sa pagtulong sa aming kapwa. Ikaw po nawa ang maluwalhati sa lahat ng aming katagumpayan sa araw na ito. Ito lamang po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Yesus. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang maghiling kaya sa sinahanan alam ng puso sa dikit mo'y buhay upang hinirang tuyat na ng magiging sa manlulupin kita pa sisigil sa nagatang tutok sa simoy at sa langit mong pangraw ay hinagang tulad awit sa pagkaya minamahal ang isang nakumakaw at mo'y nagumpay na nagtinindig ang pituwing na paro niya kailan ang may limang tinindig lumang ang araw ng walhabit pagsingka Acknowledge and recognize the presence of Senator Robin Hood Patilla. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee is now called to order. Secretary, can you uh, acknowledge the presence of our resource person? Yes, Your Honor. From the Commission on Audit, we have Ms. Joycelyn Ramos, Director for Cluster 6 Health and Science National Government Audit Sector. From the Department of Finance, we have Attorney Ryan Omar Ching, International Finance Group of the DOF. From the Department of Health, we have Attorney Frances May Cheryl, Cheryl M. Talan, Assistant Secretary, Office of, the Legal, Affair, of Legal Affairs, Dr. Anthony C. Ku, Director for Field Implementation and Coordination Team, Ms. Rowena Lora, Director for Financial and Management Service, and Dr. Maria Joyce U. Lucusin, IC Director for Supply Chain, Man Chain Management Service. Uh, from the National Task Force Against COVID-19, we have former Secretary Vince Dizon, former, former Deputy Chief Implementer. In the Office of the Solicitor General, we have Attorney Elvira Castro, State Solicitor. From AstraZeneca Pharmaceutical Philippines, we have Attorney Maria Pamela Labayan, Associate Director for Compliance, Mr. Victor Sepulveda, Head of Government Affairs. From IP Biotech, we have Mr. Jaime Enrique Gonzalez, Chairman, together with Attorney Voltaire Bautista, Legal Counsel. From the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, we have Attorney Christine B. Your Honors. Those so far are the persons present, Your Honor. Any resource person not present but to send excuse letters? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, we have from the Department of Health, uh, the OIC, Dr. Berhere. She wrote a letter addressed to the chairman uh, regarding her availability because of an important trip to Geneva for the 2023 Global Ministerial Vision Safety Summit. So the OIC DOH is now in Geneva? 
Yes, Your Honor. So place the excuse letter as part of the records for today's proceedings. Who else? Yes, Your Honor. From the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconcil Reconciliation, and Unity, uh, Secretary Carlito Galvez also wrote the chairman a letter. He says Is he that... still the Presidential Advisor or the Secretary of National Defense? I, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but that was the... That was the stationery that he used. So this is not an old letter? This is 20 February 2023, Your Honor. So place this as part of the records. And the excuse being? That, we, that the other side will not be able to attend due to a previous commitment to participate in the National Innovation Council scheduled on 21st February at 9 a.m. at Malahanyang Palace to be chaired presided by His Excellency the President, Your Honor. Place that as part of the record. Who else? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we have a letter addressed to the Chairman received from Gabriel Cordoba, Chairperson. He, he says that this refers to the directive of the committee during the executive session adopted last February 1 for COVA to provide the details the supply agreements for COVID-19 vaccines. It is being informed that the copies of the supply agreements transmitted to the RDT are not certified as true copies of the original. Hence, we believe that the Department of Health is in the best position to provide the information being requested. Further, we cannot provide the same information in view of the ongoing special audit by this commission in consonance with item 3.2 G of COA Circular Number 2013-006, dated September 18, 2013, Your Honor. Noted and insert that as part of the records. Any new resource persons present here have yet to take their oath? Uh, Secretary Dizon, uh, the representative from COA, who else? Attorney Ch Chung? Ching? Ching, Your Honor. Ching. Uh, the secretary is directed to administer the oath. Please rise. Oh, this, uh, the general counsel. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The last hearing conducted by this committee was a closed door session. No, pursuant to the rules, no items discussed during the said closed door session will be given out and no discussions were made as part of the records. However, if there are items even discussed during the closed door session that will be discussed today freely and voluntarily, since this is a public hearing, they will become part of the records and you can likewise be questioned thereof. Agreed? May we, may we ask Secretary Dizon? Uh, you'll be the first in line. From the previous discussions, what came out was that an this is an unassailable fact now, more than 44 million doses of vaccines were not utilized and eventually expired because of some reasons known only to a few. One, perhaps these vaccines were about to expire when procured. Two, there were systems in place that would that prevented the proper distribution of the vaccines. Three, lack of proper information campaign on the part of the intended recipients, meaning to say our Kababayans. And four, inexcusable neglect perhaps on the part of those handling the vaccines. From what you know, Secretary Dison, having been your designation, sir? Vaccines are before? No, no, Your Honor. I was the deputy chief implementer, uh, second to Secretary Carlito Galvez, who was the vaccine, sir. 
So what's the difference between a vaccine, sir, and an implementor? So there were, Secretary Galvez uh, initially was appointed by President Duterte as the chief implementor of the National Task Force. I was uh, subsequently appointed as deputy of Secretary Galvez. However, when the uh, vaccines were developed and uh, there was obviously the urgent need to to procure and administer the vaccines, Secretary Galvez was again given a additional function as vaccines are to spearhead the uh, procurement and the administration and management of the vaccine program. Repeat that line, sir. Uh, that last line that you mentioned. Yes, I was... Uh... Yes, Secretary Galvez was subsequently... Uh, yes, sir. Of Senator Padilla. Yes, sir. No problem, sir. Uh, the, Mr. Chairman, the appointment of Secretary Galvez as vaccine czar was subsequent to his function as chief implementer. Uh, as you know, the, the pandemic uh, took on several... Uh, the response against the pandemic took on several phases. And uh, Secretary Galvez was initially the chief implementer of the entire national task force, but was subsequently appointed to head the vaccine program of the national government. And when you took over as the chief implementer, the, the role was just, the initial role was just stepping into the shoes of Secretary Galvez. No, I was deputy chief implementer, uh, Mr. Chairman. And I was essentially the number two of Secretary Galvez for the entire uh, time that we were part of the National Task Force. So I supported him in all his functions, uh, Mr. But, uh, Chairman. Am I correct that uh, you eventually took over? And no. So you were just the second in command? Yes. Good. From what, from what you know? From what you know? And again, I reiterate, the purpose of this hearing hearings would not be to ascribe fault on anyone on any agency on any private entity but but to enable the general public to know how their money was used to how the systems in place then would have been fine tuned and better implemented had we, because we now have the privilege of hindsight and lessons learned and looking forward if there would be other situations like this on how the DOH or any other agency could have done this, could do this better. So one of the, one of the continuing questions probably would be how much was the vaccine? Moderna, Pfizer, Sinovac, even Sinopharm, Janssen's, Sputnik, and the rest. What was the difference why there was a price, price mark difference between them? Reasons given perhaps would be the need for available vaccine at that precise moment. And you have to pay. And you have to pay. And you have to pledge. And you have to make a down payment. How was the system in place then? Who decided which vaccine, which pharmaceutical company to engage with? What about the tripartite agreement? Bear in mind that there is still a special audit being conducted by the Commission on Audit. So all of this will have to be clarified. And at the end of the day, we will produce in place several procurement methodologies in situations like this. Not necessarily pandemic, but in an emergency situation, necessitating a quick government response, not necessarily the national government, but even LGUs. How was the tripartite agreement with, between the private sector and the LGUs implemented? 
Secretary Dizon, ito po siguro yung gusto malaman ng ating mga kababayan na kikinig ngayon. Sa pagpili po ng bakuna sa iyong nalalaman, bago natin puntahan yung iyong tungkulin bilang second in command as implementor, paano, paano po nag-negotiate sa presyo? Mr. Ano Chairman, yung baseline? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first and foremost, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to state uh, with, uh, for the committee to, to know that I was not IV to the vaccine procurement negotiations. That was uh, not within my purview. Uh, yun po ay uh, naging purview ng ating vaccine czar, si Secretary Galvez. At sa aking pagkakalam, kasama ang uh, Department of Health, uh, led by former Secretary Francisco Duque and also the Department of Finance uh, represented by to my knowledge uh, under Secretary Mark Hoven. Uh, sila po yung uh, official na nakipag-negotiate sa iba't ibang mga kumpanya sa pag-procure uh, ng mga bakuna. However, um, Mr. Chairman, if you will allow me uh, Based on my knowledge as being part of the National Task Force, I think it's very important for us uh, to look back the proper context and circumstance uh, of the time when we were in the process of negotiating and procuring the vaccines. Um, first and foremost, uh, una una po, Mr. Chairman, yung pong panahon na yon ay uh, panahonan na bilang sumisipa po mga kaso ng COVID. No? At uh, naalala ko pa po yun, yung po yung panahon na nagkaroon ng napaka deadly variant, yung Delta variant na unang uh, lumabas sa India. At uh, kami po yung naghahanda sa eventual noon na pagpasok sa Pilipinas. No? Uh, yung, yung panahon na yun, uh, nagsisimula pa lang ang paglabas nitong mga bagong bakuna. Sa aming pagkakalam, unang mga gumabas noon ay ang Pfizer at uh, AstraZeneca. No? This is in my, uh, my recollection po ng mga panahon na yun. No? So talagang nagkukumahog po ang ating gobyerno na makahanap ng paraan na makabigay ng mabilis at makahanap ng source ng bakuna. No? At uh, sa aking kakalala, Nung panahon po na yun, eh wala po tayong makuha dahil po uh, lahat po ng makausap nating mga pharmaceutical companies at that time sinasabi na na pre-order na ng mga mayayamang bansa tulad ng Amerika, ng uh, United Kingdom kung saan dinevelop ang AstraZeneca at iba pang mga mayayamang bansa ang uh, initial orders na ginabas ng mga pharmaceutical companies. So, uh, tayo po nung panahon na yun, hindi makakuha ng mga bakuna na, na ginawa sa, sa Amerika at sa Europe. So, uh, ang tinakbuhan po natin sa utos ng ating Pangulo na rin ay ang bansang China. No? Kaya po ang unang mga bakunang dumating na donated ng, uh, na donated ng China ay yung mga unang bakunang dumating. No? Yun pong sa aking pagkakalam ay Sinovac. No? Yun po ang unang-una naming um sinalubong uh, can i cut you short uh, so get yes, so, was there in any st strings attached for instance if a country would donate 20,000 doses of vaccine would that eventually lead the way to the purchase of an x amount volume of vaccines from the same donor sa akin pagkakaalam wala pong anumang uh, kondisyon o no, strings attached uh, ang pag-donate ng uh, mga bansa tulad ng China at uh, tulad na rin ng mga ibang bansang tumulong sa atin po no, na nag-donate I think ang Australia, nag-donate din po ang, uh, ang Amerika, nag-donate din po at iba pang mga bansa sa Europa. You're, you're referring to COVAX facility, but uh, hindi po, hindi pa po yan. Ito po yung mga bilateral na, na donations. I'm looking at some figures wherein some donors would donate and eventually the government would purchase from the same donor country. Yes, but it's true. Dahil po, halimbawa, ang... Looking at the proportionality of the amount 
the volume donated vis-a-vis -vis the, the volume purchased. Baka yun yung strings attached. Bakit ka magdo-donate kung hindi ka hindi mo i-require na yung donate bumili rin sa inyo in the future. Uh, sa akin po, kagaya po ng sinabi ko, Mr. Chairman, at least sa akin pong pagkakaalam, no? sa aking personal knowledge, wala pong uh, strings attached ang mga din-donate sa atin. Uh, Nag-cutting lang po siguro na, alimbawa, ang um, nag-donate ng Estados Unidos uh, ng uh, X amount of vaccines no? uh, through COVAX. No? Through COVAX, I think the United States donated their vaccines such as their J&J &J vaccines through COVAX. Dumihin po tayo tayo sa Amerika dahil sila po ang... Uh, ang bansa na nag-manufacture nag, nag ng dalawa sa pinaka uh, madaming vaksin na ating pinurchase, no? yung pong Pfizer at Moderna. Ayan po nito, Secretary. Nag-donate sa atin ang Sinovac ng uh, 4,075,000 doses. Subalit, bumili naman tayo through loan 45,630,400. Plus, plus. Ganon din sa Pfizer. Nag-donate po ng, uh, nag po ng 1,432,080. Bumili naman tayo ng 40,001,130. Is there a correlation between the intent to donate and the eventual procurement made by the government? That's, that's my question. Otherwise, if we rely on the pure liberality of the donor, how come, in most of the cases, we, we purchase from the donor? Napakabait naman ito mga to. Binila na natin. O, na, nag-donate, tapos bili tayo doon. Wala, walang correlation to. Ako po, sa aking personal na knowledge habang nagtatrabaho sa NTF, wala po akong nakitang correlation dyan. Uh, kasi wala na ako nung panahon yun, una po yung uh, donation, halimbawa, ano? Pagkira po tayo, practically, nagmamakaawa na po sa ibang mga bansa at that time, no, dahil pala, wala pa po tayong ma ma mabili uh, sa uh, global market no, ng mga bakuna, nagkukumahog tayo at tayo talagang practically kumakatok sa mga pintuan ng ating mga uh, partner countries tulad ng China, ng Estados Unidos, mga iba't ibang bansa. Pagkira po makahingi man lang ng kahit na ilang doses na maibibigay nila sa atin. Sabi uh, naman po sa nakin na nagkaroon na po ng supply at ay makakabili na. So, we now go to the implementation stage. Yes. Okay. okay. So, this is now your role. As the second in command of the implement implementor, Secretary Galvez, bakit po uh, this is from the records coming from uh, Dr. Verher herself, 44 million Doses of vaccine wasted, wasted, uh, and 2.7 million. Just, just visualize this. I'm not. I don't have a calculator here. 44 million doses of vaccine wasted. That was before. I think this this already increased. These figures, 44 million. Dr. Berhere, during her previous testimony here, mentioned that. If there is a 2.7 million doses of vaccine wasted, that would be equivalent to 1.3 billion pesos. 2.7 million doses, average, this is a, a mixture of all the different vaccines, would be equivalent to 1.3 billion pesos. If you're now speaking of 44 million doses, Medyo mind-boggling nito ng kaunti. Okay. So we now go to the implementation stage. Paano po, paano po ang, ang implementation? Ito po ba yung first in, first out, first in, last out? I remember when the, I remember when the Taliban were able to conquer Kabul. They were able to search and occupy some warehouses of war material. And when they entered the premises, the first issued bullets were at the back. And all those who were utilized eventually were those at the front. 
So yung matanda-tanda ng mga 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 bala at mga gamit ay nasa likuran. Yung nasa harapan na kinukuha lagi, yung nasa harapan. Madaling kunin, katabi nung nagdi-dispatch. Just visualize that. Ganito rin po ba sa vaccine distribution? Yung unang deliver mapupunta sa likod. Yung, yung, yung latest delivery na sa harapan, pag nag, naglabas, nag-distribute, mapapalabas yung nasa harapan, madaling kunin. How was the, how was the distribution system the, uh, in terms of logistics uh, done then? Because 44 million would refer to those about to expire. Not attributing any blame, uh, but just explain to this committee how this was done. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sa akin din pagkakalam na nagmamanage po kasi ng supply and logistics no, na yung ating Department of Health, pero very, very strict po ang uh, policy ni Secretary Galvez uh, at ni Secretary Duque na kailangan first in, first out. Meaning, priority natin i-distribute, i-labas yung mga bakuna na unang pumasok. Chinecheck sa aking pagkakalam, um, the DOH um, supply chain uh, division can verify this. Very strict po sila sa pag-check ng expiry dates na kailangan yung mga maagang mag expire yun ang dapat unang tinutulak labas sa ating mga LGU, sa ating mga iba't ibang mga ospital para ma-administer sa ating uh, mga kababayan. Mr. Chairman, again, uh, if you will allow me uh, just to again add context for and the, the circumstances ng kapunahunang iyon no, na hinaharap ng national government dito sa unprecedented uh, vaccination program na ginawa po ng ating gobyerno at ng ating bansa kasama na rin ng private sector. Ang um, sinila namin ang, ano, no, ang um, vaccine program Meron pong napakagandang tanong si Secretary Galvez no, na tinanong niya sa DOH. Na, sa history ba ng DOH, um, ano ang uh, pinaka-widespread at pinaka-malawak, pinaka-madaming bakuna ang na-administer ng DOH sa loob ng isang taon no, uh, sa iba't ibang mga bakuna at iba't ibang sakit? Ang sagot po sa amin ng DOH at that time, and I remember that very vividly, was uh, 500,000 doses in one year. No, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I cannot remember na lang po kung, kung uh, uh, bakuna sa dengue ba yun o bakuna sa polio o yung sakit. No? Pero yun po. No? So, um, what we meant po na kailangan talaga na baguhin at i-redesign ang buong vaccination program ng gobyerno. Kasi uh, you can imagine po, no, ang target ni Secretary Galvez, ni Secretary Duque at that time, uh, ay uh, magpagbakuna tayo ng 70 million Filipinos uh, by the end of 2021, if I'm not mistaken, or by the beginning of 2022. So, Napaka, dami po doon, napaka, parang imposible po kung iisipin natin. So, yun po yung malaking task na hinaharap namin yung kapanahon na yun. Add to that, yun po na, isa ng 2021, meron po ginawang survey, no? uh, iba't ibang survey companies regarding vaccine acceptability or vaccine hesitancy. And the ones mo sa, sa survey na yun, matatandang ba po ito? Uh, 35% lang po na willing magpabakuna. This was, I think, in the first or second quarter of 2021. So, uh, 65% uh, hesitant na medyo nakakot o ayaw magpabakuna. Um, pero po, uh, maalala ko pa po, may napakalaki pong debate noon sa ating kongreso at uh, Uh, dito sa Senado din po, nagpatawag po ng, uh, ng maraming mga hearings ang ating mga uh, legislators. At sa, mayroon po mga nagpapos kasi po noon na uh, tinatawag nilang vaccine mandate na ito po ay uh, propose at hindi po nasa. No? At yun naman po mga third or fourth quarter na 
marami na po tayong mga iba't ibang mga bakuna na dumating sa bansa, nagkaroon naman po tayo ng tinatawag na vaccine preference. So, marami pong mga factors, uh, Mr. Chairman, that were really uh, constraining and limiting the, uh, the, max, the, the push to vaccinate for people with the COVID-19 vaccine. But having said all of that, talaga po na pinilit po ng ating gobyerno sa pangunin ng ating mahal na pangunin at that time, maaalala niyo po that to the people po ng Pangulong Duterte ng Panahinan, talagang wala siyang tigil na nagsasabi sa ating mga kababayan na magpabaki na pa kayo minsan. Minsan nga po, baan niyo po ang ating mahal na pangulong na huling mag-joke minsan. Pero talaga po ang pinipilit na ang ating mga kababayan na magpabaki na. So, given that, all of that po, ang naging Simple po ang maging thrust ng Secretary Galvez at namin sa NTF. To vaccinate as many and as fast as we could. Yun po yung sinasabi ng Sec. Galvez yun. As many and as fast. Kapag po tayo lang ang dumating na po yung mga bakuna at magkaroon na tayo ng maraming supply. Yung una po kasi, Mr. Chema, ang problema natin yung una, lang tayo ng bakuna. Sinayala ko yung mga panahon na ang mga LGU po natin ay talagang nagmamakaawa na bigyan pa ninyo kami. Humihingi po sila tayo ng itulit ng mga bakuna. Kaya lang kami po ay wala nang maibigay. No? Wala nang po kami maibigay kasi nga po distribute na natin sa ibang mga LGU. Sakari, Secretary. Yes, I, I would like to quote one of the Uh, statements given by Sec uh, Secretary Verhere during her previous appearance here, wherein, and the transcripts would uh, bear this out, she was quoted as saying that most of those vaccines considered expired and part of the 44 million wastage were donations. Were donations. So, kung matupad po itong first-in, first-out policy, yung unang dinonate, eh bakit nag-expire at hinintay pang uh, magkaroon ng gastusin at bibilin? And probably before you, you answer that, Secretary Dison, I'd like to ask AstraZeneca. Who's the representative of AstraZeneca here? Nasaan na po kayo, ma'am? Can you, Good morning, can you your honor. restate your name? Medyo Good malayo. morning, Your Honor. Um, I'm attorney Maria Pamela Labayan. Yes. For AstraZeneca. Uh, records would show that 6,000, 6,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000
Star Brand at saan po nanggaling ang pantustos dito? Ito po ba'y donasyon o binayaran ng pamahalaang nasyonal, pamahalaang lokal through a tripartite agreement or even the private sector? Ma'am, you have the floor. Maraming salamat po, uh, sir. Uh, Unang-una po, ang Department of Health ang nag-store and nag-distribute lang po ng COVID vaccines na procured and donated to the Department of Health. Kami rin po ang nag-store uh, and distribute ng mga COVID vaccines na uh, ng mga LGUs procured na wala po silang identified na third-party logistics. Now, so, ma'am, kayo po yung nakakaalam kung ano yung dumating na bakuna. Kayo ba yung kasama dun sa sumasalubong sa airport? Di ba, pag sila babaho sa airport, diretso na Marikina, diretso po ng uh, isang isang cold chain natin dito sa may sukat. Kayo po yun, nandun lagi kayo, di ba? Kaya chinecheck yun eh. Chinecheck po yun. Ano ito yung dumating na bakuna? AstraZeneca ba to? Sputnik to? Kayo yung dispatcher. Kayo yung marker. Kayo yung tumatanggap. Ba? Sir, I didn't have the opportunity to join the arrival team ng ating mga bakuna but we have a team po na sila po ang sumasalubong po doon po sa mga bakuna sa, at sa airport. Team niyo po yun, team niyo. Apo, uh, ang nangunguna po dito ay ang aming undersecretary po, si Secretary Carol uh, Tainyo po, being the chairperson po at that time ng the TG on the uh, logistics po. Or chain and logistics, I would say. Salamat po, ma'am. Mabalik ako sa tanong, sa tanong ko. So, alam ninyo po kung ano po yung dumating, about to expire, saan napunta, sino, nag, sino ang nag-donate, at kanino naman binayar. Alam niyo po lahat yun. Okay. Lahat po ng bakuna po na dumarating po sa atin, ay kami po ay informed kung ano yung klaseng bakuna na darating, ano po yung storage temperature na required, ano po yung mga doses per vial? Kami po rin ang uh, na-inform din kung ilang pong uh, crates po na darating po sa amin. Ito pong informasyon ay ibibigay po sa amin kung sino po you are sa within the Department of Health po na isang opisina who also is in charge po coordinating sa lahat po ng bakuna na papasok po sa ating bansa. Ma'am, doktora. Sa lahat po na nakalap na, na niyong datos, hindi ko pa kayo tinatanong ulit, babalikan ko yung per brand mamaya na nasayang. Sa lahat na nakalap niyong datos, ano naman po ang coordination sa opisina ni Second in Command Chief Implementer at First in Command Chief Implementer? Ano to? Horizontal, vertical, do you report daily? O sila ang nag nagliliyason sa inyo? Paano po ito, paano po ito nagaganap? Uh, meron po tayong mga uh, technical working groups po at that time po. So meron po tayong National Vaccination Operations Center po. So lahat po ng information with regards to the vaccine arrival and all the vaccine strategies, um, pati po yung mga uh, vaccine brands po, ito po ay pinapaalam po doon po sa NVOC. So po. National Vaccination Operation uh, Center po. And then... Y yun, po yung, yun po yung opisina ni na Secretary Dison, Secretary Galvez. Yes po, sir. So you do that on a daily basis? Yes, sir. There is an um, everyday uh, 8 o'clock uh, meeting po. Sir. All these are the operations. Lahat po ng directives for the next steps po are being laid down during each meeting. Hindi lang po minsan, minsan po... Uh, twice a day. Twice a day or yeah. thrice a day, depende po yeah. sa uh, need po, yeah. sa situation. So, uh, during those meetings, during those discussions, you relate to the NBOC. C, the vaccine's about to expire. Expired. Will expire. Etc., etc. Yes, Your Honor. Even for the vaccines that has to be distributed to that part on that particular day, and to which are LGUs, po, they are also uh, informed, Your Honor. So, pag mas malayong LGU, wag mo hindi mo na yung papadala yung malapit na mag-expire. Yung malapit-lapit na LGU, yung malapit-lapit na mag-expire, di ba? Kasi yung transportation 
uh, delays, baka lalong lumala. Tama po ba? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, there sure. are many strategies po yes. na aming po na employed po during that uh, vaccination uh, uh, distribution okay. operations. We don't, we don't have to go into the details now. We, we, we appreciate your candidness. Ano-ano ngayon yung mga vaccines na nasayang sa 44 million? 44 million is now, is, is, that, is that still the same figures or have we reached 60 million? The 44 uh, million uh, doses that was reported was as of December 2, 2022. So, so nadagdagan pa ho yun? Kasi yes, yung Honor. nadagdagan na nabakunahan, eh kakaunti na lang. 1 point something percent. So kung kakaunti na lang yung nabakunahan, mas marami yung nag-expire. Mas marami yung nag-expire na bakuna kaysa na, sa nadagdagang nagpa-booster at nagpabakuna pa. Tama po ba ako? As per our uh, updated data po ng... Uh, oh, isang tanong, bago niya diretso. Nagme-meeting pa ba yung NBOCC? Set, yung sinasabi niya twice a day. day wala na. Abolish na. Nag-expire pa rin. Ito po ang uh, pangalan po ng, nila po ngayon. Ano ng pangalan? Nag-ibang anyo na. Anong pangalan na? Ha? Uh, hindi na po siya an interagency uh, committee, but it's already a committee... Uh, within the Department of Health, po, sir. So, we don't have a vaccine, sir, right now? Wala na? Since when? December 2? Since the change of the administration, sir. So, we don't have a chip implementer. But we still have IATF, di ba? Kasi hanggang September pa yung state of emergency, oh, expired na rin. As far as you know, Will answer. Tara, babalik kang pakita, ma'am, dun sa Fair Brand, ha? Hindi pa tayo tapos doon. Yes, sir. Yun lang, isang sagot lang. May, may IATF pa? Pero po, ma'am. Uh, as far as we're... Uh, there is still an IATF. And we an still NAF, have. But the vaccines are... No more uh, vaccines are... It's already integrated in the DOH programs. Okay. Ma'am, can, can you proceed? How many vaccines per brand expired? Wasted. We have here the, the list of the uh, vaccines reported by the different uh, regions as well as the uh, LGUs. So, sir, ano yung report ko? December? Siguro po, hindi na po yung per region. Halimbawa po, uh, Sputnik. Ilan nag-expire na Sputnik? Ilan nag-expire na Moderna? Ilan nag-expire na Pfizer? Okay. So, for the vaccine brand Sinovac, so a total of 1.4 uh, uh, million uh, doses. I'll just have sir, to uh, round it off. Okay. Do that then AstraZeneca is 11.0 uh, uh, million doses. Gamalaya is 1.7 uh, million. Pfizer for adult is 2.5 uh, million. Pfizer Pedia. 669,548. Moderna is 11 million. Janssen is 3.3 million. Sinopharm is 1.3 million. Sputnik is uh, 2.9 uh, million. Mom Gamalaya and Sputnik, they're the same, right? There is a Sputnik light box. Yeah. The Gamalaya that I mentioned earlier was that for the component one and component two. Then we there, there were also reported from our CHDs and LGUs that no brand name was uh, indicated and it's 12.1 uh, uh, um, million doses. Po. Can you repeat that? Meron nakapasok na no brand na nag-expire? Paano yun? Wala na. Paano nakalusot sa FDA yung no brand? Ano yan? Parang ano? No. Parang uh, kulurum na yun. So sa ano? No sir. Uh, let me correct myself po. Uh, they have a brand. Okay. But then during the report on the vaccine wastage reporting, the LGUs identified. didn't identify. But you were the ones who are familiar with the distribution scheme who received what date? So, alam na rin, mapipinpoint din po yun kung anong brand. Halimbawa po, kapunta sa South. So, ano ba yung madalas ipadala sa South? Di ba? 
hindi naman siguro sa isang LGU nagpadala ng Trentang Janssen's, Benteng Pfizer, more or less isa na lang siguro po 'yon, 'di ba? For purposes of uh, efficiency. Isang ano, freezer. Yeah. So le let me uh, describe to you on the levels of our distribution. Balikan ko yan, unidentified vaccines, uh, 12 million. Yeah. Yan po, tama? 12.1 million. 12.1. So parang, parang UFO to. And unidentified vaccines. Well, pero un branded po ito. Yes, these are, these are various brands po, but then the LGUs did not indicate in the our reporting forms the name of the the brand of the vaccine that uh, they receive uh, job of the municipal health officer diba? yes job of the, your regional uh, director coordinate with the municipal provincial health officer go ahead and may sasabihin pa kayo yeah uh, with regards to the distribution ma'am before that uh, you what's the total it's uh, 44 Four. million So, 74... Stick na muna tayo as of December 2. And the price? As, this is as of December 2. The po. price, ma'am, the cost? The price po, we didn't uh, indicate po the cost because the, the this vaccine has uh, various uh, costs po. Okay. And out of the 44 million, because uh, your secretary, OIC, was quoted during our last uh, previous, previous hearing that most of those Uh, vaccines that expired were donated. Donated. Out of the 44 million, uh, what is the percentage of vaccines donated? For the donation, sir, we have to, we have classified it as to COVAX donation and the bilateral uh, donations. For the COVAX donation, it's uh, 10.1 million or doses. Yes, we're talking here of right. doses and it's equivalent to 13.19%. And for the bilateral, it's 1.1 uh, million doses. Po. What, what is bilateral? So uh, from country to country. country. So more or less this will involve Sinovac. This will involve uh, Gamaleya. And uh, AstraZeneca, but not Gamaleya. AstraZeneca, but not Gamaleya. So, And the Sputnik, Sputnik Light. AstraZeneca, Gamaleya also, because that was promised by the Russian ambassador before. And that, that would entail an agreement, a bilateral agreement between the Philippines and Russia. Diba? So Gamaleya is part. So can you repeat the figures? Um, from the COVAX is uh, 10.1 million. Then from the bilateral donations, it's 1.1 million doses. So we're now speaking of 11.2 11.2 million out of the 44 million waste stage. So from, from your figures, it would appear that this is just a this is just this is even below 50%. Of the vaccines available, so 11.2 million. 44. Wala si Senator Pimentel dito eh. 44 million minus 11 million. Ilan po yon? May napo ako sa mat. 32.8. 32.8 eight million purchased by the government. Correct, ma'am? No. Ha? Sabi nyo yung 11.2 ito yung donated. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, sir. So, Sorry. pag minus mo yung donation sa total figure ng 44, ang matitira is 32.8. So, yung 32.8, binili ito. Sir, there are also LGU procurement. Oh, but, pinili din yun. Nonetheless, if you're referring to internal revenue allotment or whatever development funds they use since they declared the state yeah. of calamity. So, there's all... There are also uh, private sectors po, out from this. Okay, let's dissect. From the 32.8 million, magkano po ang sa private sector dito? May I ask the uh, Philippine Chamber of Commerce, who, who is the representative? Nandito yan eh. Who is the representative of the private sector here? Uh, Ma'am, uh, Attorney 
Distinde, uh, Federation of Chinese. Yes, sir. And then the other one is, sino yung nagtaas ng kamay? IP Biotech, ho. IP Biotech. So, uh, before I return to DOH, uh, uh, Ms. Christine D., magkano po ang binili ng private sector, as far as you know? Sir, sa amin po, uh, we, uh, we procured 500,000 doses of Sinovac. Yeah, konti lang. But, uh, Your Honor, ours has not yet expired. Ours will expire in May. Ah, so that's not part of this computation? No, Your Honor. So you will still use the 500,000? Sir, um, we're trying to finish the the uh, remaining vaccines, Your Honor. So so far, how are you doing? Sir, we conducted um, a vaccination drive last December. Um, however, for the new year, we have not um, conducted any. So last three months. So... What's the reception of the public in so far as Sinovac is concerned? So we, um, for the Sinovac, so we used uh, them on pediatric for the children. But for for um, adults, uh, I believe that uh, Sinovac was used for the boosters already, sir. So most of the most um, most adults uh, use uh, either hetero heterologous booster or a homogenous booster so uh, people are choosing which boosters they will use so, and most are not allowed and most of the adult uh, demographic are not allowed a uh, uh, second booster so we cannot use it for that sir Dr. Uh, Joyce yung sinasabi ng FFC, FFCII yung sign na ba pwede rin pang booster pwede rin pang bata pang booster na pang bata pa pero ikaw kanina sinabi mo Pfizer ang dami nag-expire na pediatrics Ma'am, may figures kayo nag-expire na pediatrics vaccine ng Pfizer? One point something. 660? So, balikan ko ma'am. Bakit ngayon, ma'am, pwede ba ang pambooster pam at pambata yung, yung sign back? Pwede yan? Your Honor, may we direct uh, Director Anton Kutu respond being our technical office director doctor or director doctor doctor ko good morning chair for the um for the first booster shot um the following can be used um si um uh, astrazeneca gamelea moderna pfizer sinopharm sinovac gamelea sputnik light and janssen Sa for the booster. first booster. booster. Sa pediatrics? Um, this is for the um, 18 years old and above. For the pediatric? For the pediatric group, um, not uh, only Pfizer is being used for booster shots. Pa pa paano ngayon yung sinabi niyo, Ms. Christine? That's for primary series. Sir, I think uh, for the second booster, we're not allowed uh, to use Sinovac for the second booster. And I think the majority of the populations are not allowed. Sa bata ba ilang booster? Only one, Your Honor. O, bakit may secondary pa? Sir, Sir, for... Detalye na tong sa atin eh. Yes. So, ang tanong ko lang ganito. Uh, ilan, ilang, ilan, ilang halaga ang nasayang na coming from the private sector? Out of the 44 million. The private sector, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Chairman, 500,000 doses we purchased of Sinovac for the private sector. Only 13,040 remain in storage today. So 97.2% has been dispatched and consumed. So 2.8% remain in storage. We've centralized everything in Zwilig. Uh, we filed recently to extend the shelf life to May 30, 2024. So this is pending in FDA. If that happens, the shelf life will be extended by more than one year from today. DOH, na extend by yung shelf life? Um, yes, sir. yes, Your Honor. Um, there is a mechanism for extension of the EUA um, on the shelf life of the vaccine. It kaya, will depend on the... Matigil kita, hindi kaya itong 44 million na nag-expire eh, dahil hindi nyo na-extend yung shelf life ng iba? 
there are various um uh, reason for the reported wastage of the vaccine. I think Director Joyce can break down the As various reasons. The expiration, nabasag, na lagay sa maling temperature, na natapon. Uh, yung sa expiration tayo, in-extend nyo ba yun? Nabawasan tong wastage? Eh, allowed naman pala kayo mag-extend eh. In-extend nyo na one year. Di ba? Your Honor, oh. if I may. Um, there are um, cases that is going to be observed in extension of the various vaccine. And is the, the extension is being apl uh, applied to what the FDA. And this will um, depend on the um, studies and um, stability studies that is being submitted by the manufacturer that is submitted to the um, FDA. Si Sinovac nak nakapag-extend. Bakit yung iba hindi nakapag-extend? Si Pfizer hindi naka-extend. Pfizer, are you here? Pfizer, is there any Pfizer representative? Pfizer? Pfizer is here? Nakapag-extend. Kasi ang iniisip ko kung baka, baka na-technical lang yung iba, hindi nag-extend. Buhay so, pa na. Uh, Secretary Dizon. Mr. So, Chairman, uh, if, if, if uh, you will allow me po. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, si Secretary Galvez ay vaccines are... Siya po, uh, in coordination with DOH, ay direct na nakikipag-usap sa mga pharmaceutical companies. Kasi po, sila lang po ang pwedeng um, mag-extend uh, mag ng shelf life. Sila po ang pwedeng mag-apply mag, uh, sa FDA para mapa-extend ang shelf life ng uh, mga bakuna. And this, uh, hindi lang po ito para sa COVID-19 vaccines. I think this applies to all types of vaccines. There is a process we are prescribed by the FDA allowing the vaccine companies to uh, apply for an extension. And Your knowledge, Secretary, uh, amongst the pharmaceutical companies, sino-sino na nag-apply for extension? Akin po ang pagkakaalam, AstraZeneca, nag-grant. In fact, uh, to my knowledge, several times nag-grant ang extension ng Astra. Sinovac, just mentioned. Uh, Sinovac, uh, Pfizer, uh, Moderna, I'm not uh, personally aware, but uh, I think the others, Janssen also, napa-extend din yan. Pero alam ko po may hangganan din, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yun ang aking pagkakaalam, hindi yan forever. No? Uh, kasi I think there is some science uh, to it, and it will be up to the FDA to say whether they accept the application of the pharma company or not. Yes, uh, we understand. We process that. May, sasag may sasagot kayo, ma'am. Uh, Yusek, may dadagdag sana kayo. Kasi ang su sunod na tanong ko, anong gagawin natin dito sa 44 million? Gagawin ba natin itong pataba? Gagawin natin itong uh, asfalto? Gagawin natin itong off the record, ha? Pwede ba itong panlital injection? Gagawin natin kung saan natin... Sa natin gagamitin to environmentally. Is this considered a hazardous waste? In based? Where do we where do we dump this? Including the vials. Where do we throw this away? Babaw natin sa lupa. Anong anong gagawin natin dito? Any recommendation coming from the DOH? I cremate ba natin to? Anong gagawin natin? Baka makadagdag pa to sa climate change kung kung itapon lang natin. Igawin natin ano pang pang uh, Gawa ng island sa West Philippine Sea. Doctor Joyce. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we started with this uh, uh, campaign, uh, we have already identified itong mga mechanisms uh, and how to ed educate us. Uh, I'm sorry, educate us. 44 million doses. Ilang container ba nito? Pag may, ilang aeroplano itong 747? Pag yung hinilera natin from... From the Philippine Senate, abot po ba ito ng uh, silang kabite? Uh, we cannot, we cannot uh, uh, estimate it kung ilang bang uh, container vans po, sir, kasi it depends on the vaccine because the vaccines may come in a single dose per vial. It can come in multiple uh, doses. Sana po itong nag-expire na 44 million. Okay. So itong mga nag-expire na vaccines can either be nandoon po sila sa ating mga uh, health facilities pa 
yung iba naman po ito ay nandoon na po sa regions and ready for pick up. Now, ito pong... Babalik sa Manila. Kasi po, meron po tayong identified po na third-party logistics who will do all these uh, reverse uh, logistics. Third-party logistics company is Willig. Sino po yan? Inan dapat na imbita natin, Comsec. Kung anong gagawin nila sa vaccine na 44 million? We have... Sir, we have the uh, third-party logistics, the Integrated Waste uh, Management Incorporated. Ito yung sa Rizal. Sa Montalban ito. Ha? Yeah. This is in Cavite, oh, sir. Amin, tama, sinabi ko sa silang. Na ano. Yes. So, ano gagawin? Any, ano, any discussions on this? What do we do with this? Because environmentally, this, this might not be safe. So this is term as the uh, reverse uh, logistics. So lahat po itong uh, vaccines po, either it's empty or merong pang laman, is they are uh, disposed uh, properly. May procedure po tayo na nakalagay po ito sa ating guidelines. It's like ma'am, ano? Uh, Babasagin yung bote, tatapon yung laman. No po. Uh, meron po tayo mga... Uh, uh, plastic po na mga containers, nilalagay po yun. We have the system. And then ilalagay po ito ulit sa isang box or isang container uh, van, uh, containers. And then ito po ay inaka-sealed. Ito po ay nilalagyan po kung ano po yung brand, ilang doses po ito, uh, ano yung expiry, and all about the information of that particular uh, vaccines po na nakalo nakalagay na that's, po that's the that's the repacking that's the clustering but how do you dispose ah. uh, susunugin ibabaon sa lupa tatapon sa Pacific Ocean pa paano the disposal is pyrolysis ito po ay sinusunog sa isang cremation nga cremation pwede sa San Lazaro hospital na yeah. dadalhin ano pong cremation po sir ayun so nabanggit ko yung any deleterious effects on the health? Kung ano, na, na, nasinghot mo ito, baka, baka akala nila siyabu ito. Pagkagawan pa. Wala kayong pag-aaral dito, ma'am? 44 million and counting. Yung marami pang mag expire May nagawa na ba ang nasunog? Yes, sir. Meron na po nagawa. And then, uh, ano po, the DN, DNR po ang makakapag... Sa Tresi Marteres. Opo. Sa eh, maliit lang ang facility doon. Ano, pugon po yun. Apo. Pugon. So doon ipapasok, paglabas, abo na. Abo na po. Yung yes, abo, po. saan itatapon ngayon. As Wednesday o bukas? As Wednesday bukas, doktora, saan lalagay yung abo? Sir, they have a final uh, disposal of those uh, saan po? Ash, which is in Clark. Oh, sa Clark naman. So from... Uh, from uh, DOH, si Marteres Kabitek, ikikremate, although you have your own cremation facility sa San Lazaro Hospital, dadalhin sa Clark. Masasagot ito ni Secretary Dison kasi galing din to ng Clark. Eh. Saan naman dadalhin ngayon sa Clark? Inaalis na natin yung mga lahar doon. Maglalagay ulit kayo ng abo. Saan po doon? Gumulo na ito. Okay. Mr. Chairman, you might uh, interject. Baka alam mo ito. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, but I'm actually not familiar with any uh, waste disposal. Is this, uh, is this the metro clark land thing that we're talking about? Or? Ah, so they are talking about for the current... So sanitary uh, landfill. It's a, it is a current landfill that... I guess the DOH Posiguro has contracted to dispose of their uh, uh, waste. That is my only, uh, no, uh, that's my kulanghulan. Kuhu-kuhu uh, kulanghulan, Mr. Chairman, but I'm not aware of the, ano. Uh, so perhaps we can invite DNR, siguro, last hearing na natin yun, kasi marami-rami ito. Ano nyo, ita any, any projected alternative use for this? Baka naman, baka pwedeng pataba o kung ano man, kasi protein ito eh. Buhay pa ho yung protein doon eh. Hindi lang, nag-expire lang siguro yung ibang ingredients. Baka magamit pa na ano, na kung saan. If I may, sir. Sir, um, um, the Department of Health has established protocol on healthcare waste management. Ito yung protocol natin. Naka, oh. 
Nakagloves kayo, pag-dispose. Apo. Pero yung pupuntahan, yung yung final resting place nito na Apo. pwedeng pakinabangan, baka... Uh, If the concern is um, infectiousness of this particular um, uh, 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 waste, matter um these are ensured that the protocols once followed um so, we are discussing kasi, already no, is no longer sinabi ka na ilalagay sa Clark eh mga live virus ito baka wala nang investor sa Clark niyan pag nalaman nila na doon binao natin lahat yung 44 million okay. di ba baka ikordo na yung area na yun Actually, this is the same protocol that is being, um, the healthcare waste management protocol that is being observed here is almost the same protocol in the um, waste uh, processing of the wastage of other materials from other hospitals. So we make sure that the, this waste are no longer infectious before actually disposing them. So the entire process makes it sterile and no longer infectious. Po. Placing it. Uh, right in the middle of that Clark area, sa Obia ba yun? Anong pangalan nun? Secretary Dizon, anong pangalan ng lugar? Actually, the, uh, the Metro Clark facility right now is in New Clark City. Doon, magta- doon nagta-training yung mga athletes natin. Nagja-jogging doon, pa- pa- singhot-singhot doon. Baka, baka mahay yung mga yun dyan sa, ano, sa, vi- sa, sa virus na ibabaon nyo doon. Just the same uh, for brevity. We expect Department of Health to submit to us a report concerning this para hindi ko na kayo pahabain. Again, uh, submit the report, uh, whatever you read a while ago. Submit to this committee. From SEC, we invite, uh, we invite DNR next hearing. From the private sector, From the private sector, sino pa ba hindi ko nabanggit, natawag? Ah, Kowa. Kowa. Uh, Director Jocelyn, kailan nalabas po yung special audit? Your Honor, good morning. Nalabas na po, nakatranspit na po kami as of February 8. Ah, sa ano po, sa DOH, we have transmitted the audit reports, tatlo po yun to DOH. The final report? Yes, Your Bakit Honor. Bakit hindi umabot sa hearing na to? That, that was when? February February 8, Your Honor. Uh, the... so, ano na ngayon? Wala pa kaming official copy. Uh, yes, Your Honor. But you were required during the last hearing to produce. Uh, no, Your Honor. We, you, we I were think only, you were asked. We were only asked when the reports will come. Out. I have here a letter coming from Chairman Cordoba. Uh, that the copies of the original supply agreements are not certified. Hence, we believe... The Department of Health is in the best position to provide the information requested, but that we cannot provide such information in view of the ongoing special audit by this commission. This is this letter is dated February 6. So you terminated the special audit on. So officially, meron na. Uh, but that that is not part of the special audit. Monitoring, Your Honor. That's part of the regular audit. No, Your Honor. Nag-usap ko na kayo dati rito na nagpalitan na kayo ng... Hindi pa rin na-comply ng DOH? Uh, tapos na po, Your Honor. Kaya meron na po kaming report na na-transmit sa kanila. Ang hinihintay po namin yung sagot nila dun sa report na transmit namin. Para sabihin nila sa amin kung ano yung gagawin nila or ginawa nila. Eh, kasasub- kasasubmit lang po nung February 8. Yes, sir. O baka hindi pa nila kayang sag- makapagano kakapal yun? Audit. Yes. Uh, at least, sir, yun. Ganito siguro ang bawat isa. We, the DOH is given 60 days, Your Honor. Ay, tagal pala nun. No? Dalawang buwan yun, ma'am. Yes, sir, ha? Your Honor. Tapos na ang ano nun? Tapos na ang may bagong variant nang dumating. Ano yun? BF? Ano yung tawag? <laughs> Ano yung tawag doon, Dr. Joyce? BF. Institutions, um, involving disputes um, which respectfully should be exclusively under the exclusive jurisdiction of these private uh, or of these higher educational institutions. Um, in effect, uh, Mr. Chair, the LEB would be authorized to review um, and even reverse um, the school's decision on um, discipline 
um, admission and even the grades received by students. And respectfully, this... Uh, Attorney Young, what section are you referring to? Mr. Chair, I'm referring to... Section I presume nine. you're commenting on a particular section. Section 9, letter J and K. I, J, and K, Mr. Chair. I, J, and K. Okay. And M, Your Honor. Your comment, Chair Trinidad. Thank you, for Mr. Chair. With respect to letter I, uh, it says there at the end, in the exercise of our regulatory and quasi-judicial functions, I think um, every administrative agency possesses quasi-judicial <laughs> powers uh, so that they will be able uh, Financial, Your Honor. Okay. Around 24 billion. And then we also had finding, this is um, for the three, Projects, Your Honor. We also had findings of variances between of the variances in the. Um, you took into consideration what Secretary Dison mentioned a while ago that this was the time when they were uh, fighting it out with other purchases, purchasers as to the limited stocks available. Na consider yon. Yes, Your Honor. The finding was they are not recorded in the books, so they were, they were not reported. Kahit emergency, kailangan recorded. Yes, Your Honor. Not and then recorded in the had, book. Uh, variances on the distributed um, vaccines based on the records of the DOH and um, the confirmation from the actual uh, recipients. So, yeah. alimbawa, uh, distributed vaccine to province of Agusan del Sur. One million doses of Pfizer. Pero pagdating doon, ang record ay? Iba. 30,000 Sinovac. Ganon. Yes, sir. So baka sa rec recording ng ano, ng uh, pero in charge dito, chief implementer na and second, kasi distribution ang pinag-usapan. So may variances. Yung resibo ng LGU, iba na tanggap. Uh, Will that matter? Will that matter, Kawa? Will, is that significant? Kasi in-expect uh, ng LGU, dumating Pfizer and dumating kakaunti sa inubak, ganon. We believe that it is significant, Your Honor, but uh, we have identified the possible um, possible areas where that can be improved. I th uh, we believe that's that what, the... That's what uh, we're here for, how to improve the system. Yes, Your Honor, uh, we'd like to work it out with the DOH on what they are going to do with their processes so that uh, these things do not happen again. Because there might be instances when it is only a matter of um, recording. Baka mali naman yung, yung tumanggap, baka may pro forma na na form doon, nakalagay, nareceive na lang na gano'n, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. So, Pagmamadali na. Apo. Oh. Ang mga causes, Your Honor, karamihan, ang mga causes noon, one is yung um, na-distribute sa ibang not to the intended um, recipients. Meron din po yung wala talaga kaming records, although we noted uh, discrepancies, yung sa records pa lang ng DOH. Okay. You, were you able to discover a high incidence of that particular case? Kasi, kasi minsan sa COMELEC, yung COMELEC dinidistribute yung balota ng Ipugaw doon sa ibang lugar. Nangyayari po yan eh, sa pagmamadali. Walang kinalaman ng COMELEC doon. Yun ang, yun ang tracking company. Balot na yun. O hindi amin to. Hindi namin to kandidato. Ba't dito to nila? Papadala na naman. Baka ganun. Possible naman po, Your Honor. So mahat mataas po yung percentage ng ganun? O baka naman significantly it po, it less? Nine billion po. Ah, nine? Billion. Nine billion? Apo. Yung mali-mali? Yung, um, oh. yes, Your Honor. Or yung amount? Yung amount po yun, nung variance, nung difference. 9 billion. Pero nagamit naman yung tumanggap ng ano, na, eh, records. DOH, narinig niyo po ito. Siguro, limbawa, nagkamali na, as against Comelec, Comelec, mali yung balota, hindi magagamit yun. Dadalhin talaga sa tamang munisipyo yun. Pero ito, kung mali yung bakuna, ay tutulong na rin yun doon. Diba? Nagamit ko kaya ito, nagamit ko kaya itong 
yung maling delivery, hindi naman mali. Mali yung, yung dapat na bakuna, ganito number, pero hindi naman isusuli na yun, ituturok na rin yun, o pina-expire. Ma'am. Yes, Your Honor, uh, so to note lang that the audit is for 2021. By 2022, all the records are already being reconciled and these are matters of delayed reporting only because of the circumstances at that time. Okay. Yes. Also, with regard to those um, vaccines that were um, sent to another location, there was already a... Um, a, a different distribution list that was um, provided by the vaccine operation. So it, there, there were already reconciliations for in the type in 2022. Pero ma'am, 9 billion daw. Sinasabi niyang variants. Um, I think, uh, no, we will be, since we are going to respond. We will, we will answer officially. Yes, oh. yes, Ito naman, ano lang ito eh, binigyan lang kayo ng advance yes. info rito eh. Kahit nga po yung Yung mga nag-order ng pagkain sa mga yung mga online online minsan may delivery siya but wala naman ako in order na lumpia but niyo ako pinadala dito sa kapitbahay pala ay mga ganon pero kung 9 billion malaki yun any other uh, adverse salient uh, findings uh, your honor we also made mention of the disadvantages of the um, supply agreements entered into by DOH with the supply manufacturers yes uh, yes, Your Honor. Yes, we will we'll go into that later. But uh, Senator Padilla would like to uh, interject. Um, Maraming salamat po, mahal na taga-pangulo. Atin pong uh, iniidolo pagdating sa batas. Senator Tolentino. Uh, ako po ay may katanungan lang po sa DOH. Ilan po ngayon ang, ngayon po, ngayon, ilan po ang vaccine na 17 million po ba? Meron po kayo? Good morning po. Magandang umaga dito. Sa ngayon po, kayo po ay merong 15 million 972,740 doses of um, various uh, COVID vaccines po na nasa national store po. Apo, ito po ay matagal pa po itong mag-expire. Meron po mag expire po based on the EUA ng uh, February. Meron din po sa March. Meron din po sa April, meron po sa May, September, and uh, this uh, coming October. Ano pong mga pangalan po nitong mga vaccine na mag expire po ngayon, February? So, nitong uh, February, meron po tayo yung PEDJA... Uh, pe, uh, Pfizer po? Uh, Pfizer na for adult. Then, uh, sa March po, meron din po tayong... Pfizer adult at saka for pedia. April is Pfizer pedia. Then for uh, May, September, and October, ito po ang Sinovac. Apo. Uh, pwede pong maitanong kung bakit parang uh, inaabot po tayo lagi ng expiration. Ayaw po talaga ng taong bayan ba na magpa-bakuna? Uh, if I may, Senator. Apo, apo. So, um, um, the Department of Health continues to advocate continue, uh, vaccination, particularly for additional booster shots. We have very good first and second primary series coverage. So, for the primary series coverage, ibig sabihin po, yung completely vaccinated na mga population natin, alos lahat po ng target natin ay na-achieve na natin at 94.59%. So halos lahat ng target natin na Pilipino ay nabakunahan na po ng una at pangalawa. Pagdating naman po dun sa 
uh, booster shots, dito po yung mas konti na po yung nagpapabakuna. Kailangan po nating alalahanin na during the time ng COVID-19, um, meron po tayong mga inisyo na policy, although hindi mandated na magpabakuna, hindi required na magpabakuna, we made it into our policy to make sure na people are going to um, basically be difficult na pumasok sa work, um, mag-travel, nang hindi nabakunahan. Pero pagdating po sa booster shot, hindi na po natin nire-require or ini-impose ang booster shot. We are advocating na magpa-booster shot. Pero this is not mandatory. Neither is it difficult for people to um, um, not get booster shot. But nonetheless, we are advocating for booster shot. So for the first 100 days of um, President BBM, we actually did a campaign to ensure increased vaccination kasi nung mga June, July, bumababa na yung mga vaccination. So during that time at every given week, there is around 500,000 accomplishment for booster shot vaccination. So maganda yung performance natin nun. And then after the first 100 days, nag-decrease po yung vaccination. And so we did again, um, Baku na Hangbayan, another run of um, intensive vaccination campaign for different LGUs. So tumaas po again in December. Unfortunately, pagdating ng January po, uh, hindi natakot yung mga tao sa COVID-19. Tapos um, hindi na rin po sila worried regarding sa ano dahil um, feeling nila ay sila po ay still protected by their primary series. So as of January, less than 100,000 na po week ang nababakunahan natin. Uh, okay po, salamat po sa masyadong ano. Okay, yung kumpletong kumpleto. Opo, tanungin ko lang po ulit si, ma, ano pong plano natin dyan sa mga mag-expire? Dahil sabi po ni Doc, mukhang wala na pong gustong magpakuna. Uh, ano pong plano natin dyan sa 50 million na yan na mag-expire? Um, we are still advocating continued vaccination. So, Opo, paano po ngayon? Uh, kung halimbawa lang po, halimbawa lang po, uh, magpatuloy po tayo. Alam niyo naman po siguro, Doc, ano, na sa internet, sa internet, natalo po tayo ng uh, campaign, ano, kasi ngayon, uh, mababalitaan niyo po sa Amerika. Alam niyo naman ng Pilipino, masyado tayong influence <laughs> ng uh, Amerika. Sa uh, Senate, Sa Senate ng Amerika, malaki ang usap din na yung patungkol sa bakuna. At uh, katunayan, may mga Supreme Court decisions sa sinasabi, katulad po ng sinabi ninyo, na sa ngayon, sa kanila, kahit na walang bakuna, pwede nang magpumasok uh, sa pisina. Dati kasi may higpit sila. Ngayon, napatunayan nila, pati din sa EU, labas din ang EU, ano, ng mga investigasyon nila, kasabay ng US Senate, na ang bakuna, lalo na yung mRNA, nagkakaroon sila ng mga question dyan. Uh, at yung mga question na yan, sa internet, ito ba talaga ay epektibo, ito ba talaga ay nakatulong, kaya ito yung mga bagay sa palagay ko na humahad lang sa ating mga kababayan, bakit medyo nagkaroon ng dalawang isip kasi naging full blown na siya eh. Alam mo na, siyempre, lumabas na ang mga tao, medyo nagkaroon na maraming, eh, ganyan talaga, wala tayong magagawa, internet ng kalaban natin. Kaya, tinatanong ko po, uh, ano po ang plano po ninyo dyan sa mga mag expire Kasi katulad po ng tinanong kanina ng ating mahal na taga-pangulo, Hindi din po, wala pa rin po kasing uh, malinaw na guidelines kung paano natin na i-dispose. Kasi tandaan po ninyo, virus pa rin po yan. Ano? Yun, lang po, yun lang naman actually ang gusto kong tinuhan. At ang pangalawang tanong po, uh, yun po, recently, pinag-uusapan sa US Senate, itong mga gumagawa ng vaccine, eh, gusto nilang magtakas ng presyo ng kanilang vaccine. At sila pa mismo nag-develop. Ang ngayon, ang ngayon po, issue ang ngayon, pagkatinignan po ninyo, uh, mag, uh, pag-aralan din po ninyo, issue ang ngayon, magkakaroon ng issue sa Pfizer. 
Kasi yung Pfizer, medyo meron silang ginagawa ngayon na hindi nagustuhan ng US Senate. So, yun po yung dalang tanong ko. Ano po ba talaga? para makonvince rin natin ng ating mga kababayan ng patuloy na kumuha ng first, second, or even the third booster shot na magiging available soon. So, tungkol naman po dun sa um, ginagawa ng Department of Health para po dun sa mga um, yung validity ng vaccine, uh, as long as meron pong available data na pwede pang extend ang shelf life nito, nakikipag-coordinate po kami sa mga manufacturer and supplier para i-consider yung applying for extension of the um, validity of this particular vaccine. Tulad rin po ng suggestion ni, Senator, ni, ni Chair Tolentino po. So yun po yung ginagawa as of this point in time. And at the same time, we are um, trying to come up with a campaign na ipapasok na po natin ang COVID-19 vaccination sa ating, uh, i-integrate natin po siya sa ating routine national immunization program on a long-term perspective po. Para po ang ating mga kababayan, pag pumunta po sila sa health center or any health facility, um, hindi po nila kailangang pumunta doon exactly para sa pagpapabakuna, but rather, kukukuha sila ng mga serbisyo, kunyari magpapakonsulta, magtatanong, magpapahealth educate, um, the health workers are going to be instructed or rather um, advocated na kakausapin po nila ang ating mga kababayan na nandun na sa health facility kung sila ay nabakunahan na, nabigyan na ng booster shot, kung sila ay eligible po, iyo offer sa kanila ang COVID-19 vaccination. Para instead po on the long run, hindi na po ito magkakaroon ng special vaccination area, but rather, ito po ay magiging available sa ating mga health facility, sa ating mga rural health unit at ating mga health center kung kailan um, iyo offer ito kapag nandun na yung mga kliyente. Maraming salamat po. With regards po sa second question, I will defer to yung procurement yung procurement to our team lead thank you ah, 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 bago po yung procurement uli yun lang po ano yung narinig ko po kanina kasi yung pong mga yung pong mga expired na siguro sunugin na lang yung mahal na taga pangulo kasi total naman yung ating mga kababayan na na pumanaw sa covid sinusunog eh hindi kaya sunugin na lang din po yan kasi parang, parang delikado nga eh. Parang delikado nga ang tingin ko, mahal na taga-pangulo, kung hahayaan lang natin yun. Panggit po, uh, Your Honor, kanina may, may, may protocol sila pero siguro show, show us that during the next hearing. Saan gagamitin? Baka meron pang pwedeng paggamitan. Baka meron pang pwede kasi protein to eh, di ba? Uh, baka, wala ba kayo naaral na gano'n kung saan pa pwedeng gamitan to? May idadagdag po kayo, doktora, sa tanong ni Senator Padilla? Apo, meron po. Procurement, tata? Um, with regard po for the procurement, currently po the DOH is no longer procuring the vaccines because of the lifting of the state of calamity. And uh, our authority is only bound by the state of calamity. Order. Lifted na? Lifted na officially? Um, there is no extension already. So we deemed, as, deemed it already as lifted and as per um, the... The US hanggang March pa. Diba? Hindi pa nalilift din sa iba. No, so, the state of calamity po. It's only up to December 31, 2022 po. The health emergency is not lifted, but the state of calamity is lifted po. 
So with that, we cannot procure anymore. So we are going through the donation route already. And with that, um, uh, there are already talks and we are already um, uh, getting the OSG's um, help on board with regard to the, um, the contracts, the NDAs. The permission the of Santa Padilla. Pero may bibili kayo ng bivalent vaccine eh. No, Di ba? No. In Inistop lang ni Presidente. Nakaakma na kayong bumili. No po, hindi po kami bibili po. We are not going to procure. As as of now po, we are not in, uh, the policy is not to procure but to um, get them through donations. So nasa budget siya, nasa gaya yung bivalent vaccine. Uh, Senator Padilla, yeah. uh, yun lang po, mahal na tagapangulo. Gusto ko lamang pong uh, kumbinsihin din po at makasama natin ng DOH sa uh, pag- uh, Atin lang pong mag-monitor lang po din tayo sa hearing ng uh, US Senate. Kasi napakaganda din po. Ako po naka-monitor din sa kanila eh. Para lang po din sa kaalaman din po natin kung ano na po yung development. Pati po sa EU, ang ganda din po ng mga hearing nila patungkol sa COVID. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Padilla. Uh, before we ask uh, the Office of the Solicitor General, we have here Attorney Chung. You're representing... Which agency? The same, DOH? Ching, Your Honor. I'm from the Department of Finance. Ah, Department of Finance. So... Hopefully, Yusek Hoven can answer. And then, yung COA, the same naman eh. You, you represent the same group. Ang hindi ko na lang natanong dito is Mr. Sipol Vida. You're representing... Uh, Your Honor, AstraZeneca po. AstraZeneca. I'm with uh, Attorney Mamel Abayan. AstraZeneca. So, siguro yung figures lang, tama ba yung mga figures na binabanggit kanina na yung AstraZeneca, X number, yung nabanggit ko, na 11 million ang uh, nasira? Wala ho kaming purview po doon sa... Uh, sa doses po na na-expire na nabanggit po ng DOH. Ang meron po kami, available po sa amin na datos, ay yung sa Zwilig po, na procured by the private sector in the LGU po, na nakastore po sa Zwilig. So wala kayong, uh, hindi, hindi nyo na monitor kung ilan na yung nag-expire sa inyo, which you, you should o, do. O, hindi po namin po siya na monitor po. You should do that. You should do that as, a, as part of your uh, corporate social responsibility. Ilan yung pumasok, ilan yung nagamit. And ang, uh, you should do that, uh, Mr. Sipolbida. I'm asking now, directing this question to Sol uh, Office of Solicitor General. In the various contracts entered into by the government and even the, the private sector and even the LGUs through tripartite agreements, is there a provision that can be interpreted to include with or without warranties, vaccines about to expire, projected purchases can be changed with a similar product emanating from the same pharmaceutical company. For instance, if within the warehouses or logistics hub of the DOH is a group of 50,000 doses not yet expired. Can the contract be interpreted with or without warranty to allow the exchange of COVID-19 vaccines to measles vaccines or to allow the exchange of COVID-19 unexpired vaccines to another type of polio vaccines manufactured, for instance, by Pfizer, so as to enable the government to fully utilize all of this, even, even if this would entail a variance, limited number of vaccines. Have you studied that, Soljen? Because in other, in other contract law interpretation, Exchange of similar product can be done, especially if it comes from the same manufacturer. Because we're now confronted with the issue of whether our countrymen 
would still, even if there is an integration with the national vaccination program, have that COVID-19 vaccine. Pwede ba natin pagpalitin na lang? Pagpalitin na lang kung ano yung binili natin worth 50 million o 50 million polio vaccine na rin o 50 million anti-missiles vaccine na rin, et cetera, et cetera. Pwede ba yun doon sa nabasa niyo yung kontrata? Uh, contract with Pfizer, contract with Moderna, contract with uh, the other pharmaceuticals including Sinovac and Janssen's. Ma'am. Um, well, first, uh, sorry, Senator, but I was advised that the contracts was just recently given to the Office of the Solicitor General. Um, when was this? So, hindi niya panara? Yes, yesterday, Your Honor. Kung lang? Um, however, Your Honor, with regard to your question, we will be we will gladly prov provide a position paper since we see the urgency of the matter um, in the meantime, so as not to waste the time of the Honorable Chair. If that is the desire of the Honorable Chair, we can do that. Because I'm, I'm sure DOH is following me, my line of thinking. Yung hindi pa natin na nagagamit or yung about to be purchased, or yung about to expire, eh ipalit na lang sa similar value ng ibang klaseng gamot na mapapakinabangan ng ating mamamayan. Gamot sa, sa bakuna nga sa polio, uh, tuberculosis, kung meron silang product ang Pfizer, nang sa ganun, mapakinabangan natin. Why, why have a bountiful stock of medicines in your first aid cabinet, all for uh, pain relievers of toothache, when what is needed by your family would be medicines for uh, stomach ache. O di palitan na lang, dapunta ka sa Mercury, palitan na lang, o sana mga butika, ito rin yung value. Can that be done? Uh, perhaps we, we need a position paper of uh, Office of the Solicitor General, study that contract thoroughly, and when we meet again, provide us with a, a, an option, because, because this will happen again. And when this happens again, we would like to have a provision in a contract which should not be a boilerplate contract incorporated therein insofar as this purchase of the government is concerned, if there is a surplus or unutilized number of medicines or vaccines purchased by the purchaser, both parties will not, are now agreeing for an exchange of similar, uh, uh, of, uh, with a similar value of any medicine required by the purchasing entity or country. Pwede ho yun, di ba? Yung mga department store nga, pinapalitan yung mga certain items sa, uh, ano, pag bumili ka. So, if we can have that studied and for future reference, perhaps, kung kaya pa dito, di maganda. Di ba? Para hindi naman luging-lugi yung ating and nag expire and then DOH, you, you should likewise coordinate with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. There is a, there is a proper way to dispose hazardous waste. I don't know if it's the Basel Agreement. There is a proper way to di dispose. Not in Metro Manila, not in Mega Manila, and then there is probably a way to uh, positively utilize the, uh, the expired vaccines. So I think we've covered a lot. Uh, we, we will still have one more, one more, one more. There is still one item that probably uh, would have to be injected here. Pero one last question addressed to anybody who can answer this, especially the Department of Health. Ang biniling vaccine, ang biniling, ang, ang na-procure na, ang total vaccine natin nakuha, donated and purchased, is 251 million. 382,600. DOH, is this the correct figure? Or even Secretary Dixon, uh, if he, his memory can be refreshed? Yeah. 251, 382, 600. Correct, sir? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So the total administered, including boosters, DOH, as per your testimony, is 161, round figure na lang, 162,000, 162, 162 million including the boosters. So if you deduct that from the total vaccines procured and donated, may natira pong 84 million 
959,195. And as of December 2, as of December 2, 2022, the expired or about to expire, nag-expire na siguro, is 44,074,982. Leaving us with 40 million, including the vaccines uh, with with the Filipino Federation of Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce, leaving us with a total of 40,884,213. Pero si Dr. Joy, sinabi kanina, natira na lang 15,972,000 doses of vaccines remaining. Uh, as what, Dr. Joyce, as what you mentioned uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago. So there is now a missing... 24,911,473 doses. So we're not, kung totoo itong computation na ito, we're not talking of a wasted 44 million, but missing 24 million. Kung tama ito, walang dagdag bawas. Tama pa po yung figures ko, doktora? So nasa na ngayon itong 24 million na na na, na vaccine doses, kung tama itong figures ko. Ma'am, you can use your calculator, computer, abacus. Sir. Go ahead. Sir, I missed uh, uh, one uh, level ng ating uh, inventory because what I mentioned was only at the national level, which was... Uh, uh, Million, 15 million plus. 972,000. No? And at the CHD, we have also at the CHD. CHD, City Health. City Health. Centers for Health uh, Development at our po regional yun. office. Okay. As well as the uh, local government uh, units po. Let me so see. what would be the total figures there? Ten million. For a one, sir, ha? So the total inventory I mentioned earlier at the national level, which was 15,972,740 doses. And the, at the CHDs and at the LGU, it's around uh, 10,646,834. So that's a grand total of 26,619,000. 574 doses. Still missing uh, 14 million. So you added 10 million uh, to your previous 15 million, that's 25 million, and we deduct your 10 million from my earlier statement of 24 million 911,000. So you still have 14 million 911,000 missing, ma'am. Sir, the variance may be attributed to the under-reporting on the vaccine administered, vaccine wastage, and even the uh, updated uh, inventory at the LGUs and private sector po. Yun ang ano, yun ang problema natin, yung unreported, underreported. So how do we reconcile these figures? Kanina si AstraZeneca, ang alam lang nila, yung hawak nila, hindi nila alam yung... Uh, Nasa labas, si Commission on Audit naman, ang sinasabi kanina, may variance din. Yung, ito na nga yung sinasabi ko, pakapareho sa Comilec, iba yung na-deliver na balota. So, but this, this, this uh, 14 million is a huge variance na hindi ordinary yung pagkaka. So if you add 14 million to 44 million, round figure, that is 58 million total. So, tama na ba tong figures ko or just uh, very confusing? Lumaki pa? Anyway, uh, as you answer the, as you officially answer the variance likewise of uh, the, COA, the COA report, I think you should reconcile this figure also for the uh, information of this committee. Siguro, mag-submit na lang kayo ng report. Baka mali lang yung computation ninyo. I, I don't want to uh, pressure you on that because you might not have the as Wednesday na bukas eh. 
Kailangan mabait tayo. You might not have the exact figures uh, before you right now. Yes, Your Honor, we will uh, submit uh, the, the report. And uh, right now, po, we have ongoing naman po na wall-to-wall -wall count of all the vaccines po, uh, nationwide. To -wall. Uh, it's an inventory po of the vaccines that has been, uh, the physical inventory po of all the vaccines that has been uh, distributed at the central office, at the, uh, the province, city, as well at the municipal uh, level po. So you're talking about distributed as well as used, actually used, actually it's, administered. We, we, we look into the number of or the quantity of the vaccines that has been uh, received and distributed po at all the levels. We look also into the number of jobs and we also look into the invent the the wastage of this uh, declared uh, wastage by this uh, different uh, at the different uh, administrative uh, levels. Uh, one one question: Can can you consider the forty four million wasted as mere hypothetical figure that might not be accurate at all, and can be probably be just thirty million, twenty million? 10 million because of the underreporting, misreporting. Do you have do you have an actual do you have an actual physical count of the the vials itself? Meron ba noon? O baka naman computation niya lang ito mali. Kasi pag sinunog na Hindi, wala na kayong ano. Hindi niya naman ilalabas yung laman nun para sunugin. Pag sinunog niyo, kasama yung bote. Di ba? Kasama yung bote. Hindi naman yun, iiwan niyo yung bote para bilangin isa-isa. Ito, kung bibilangin niyo yung 44 million, eh baka ilang buwan kayo nagbibilang doon. So, meron ba nagkamali dito na sa, sa pagbibilang, sa pagre-report? Uh there are there are coordinators po who are assigned po to do all those uh, reverse uh, logistics po and even in the uh, inventory po so there is a validation uh, coming po from the national as well at the uh, regional uh, level po you're you're pretty sure and accurate that 44 million ang wastage because those are already reported uh, to us by the different uh, regions as well as the local government units, po, sir. Okay, so uh, I think we have uh, done enough for a pre pre Ash Wednesday day, which happens to be historically a a festival. Today is a festival in, in New Orleans. Today is the Mardi Gras, the mother of all festivals. You will look at your uh, you will look at your online. So today is the day where they celebrate before fasting. So to enable the resource persons here not to be stressed out, I will call this a day. We'll just have one more hearing before we wrap this up. I'll have Secretary Galvez uh, come sec, and then we'll have the report of a. Uh, OSG, the report, the, the answer of the Department of Health to the COA special audit should be done before we call a hearing. And then we will be excusing some of the pharmaceutical companies. But we expect the recommendations coming to the Office of the Solicitor General. So we thank all of those who participated, and I apologize again for being late because I came from a long trip coming from uh, Pampanga uh, almost midnight a few hours ago. So without objections to the part of my colleagues, especially those online, this Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing is hereby suspended. Thank you for your participation.